Rad Dad says, why would you recirc one and vent the other one? I don't know. So I don't know why people do that, but people, maybe they don't want to. Okay. The moment you vent your catch cans, it's going to smell. Okay. So if you have a really nice car and you don't want to smell fumes in your car, then you're going to have to recirculate both systems. But this is my issue with recirculating both uh, crankcase ports back into the car. I think there's a there's a, a pressure buildup where they shouldn't be, which causes ring land failure on big boost vehicles. I'm not not big boost. Anything above 12, 13 psi, in my opinion, is kind of high for a Coyote on 85. So a lot of people recirculate the crankcase uh, pressure back into the vehicle, and they don't exhaust it, vent it out. And I say vent it out, get it out, get it out of the car. But it smells, Alex. Okay, then what do you want me to do? We're going to have to have a come to Jesus moment here. What do you want out of this car? You can't expect the car to run on 15 PSI on a stock motor, recirculate your crankcase stuff, and not expect a ring land to fail sooner than later. You want to give the ring land the best chance possible, and that is relieving the crankcase pressure as much as possible. So maybe you want to run the catch can to the trunk or under the trunk so it's behind you, so it's venting behind you, which takes a lot of line, a lot of work. I get it, but... At the end of the day, in my, you want to you wanna have your engine last as long as possible. Vent, vent, vent the crankcase pressure. I have a vented UPR catch can. If you follow the instructions, you shouldn't have any problems. I'm boosted, but I ran into JLT closed cans when I was in A and didn't have a problem. Garage Bill Coyote says, I've seen someone at the car show with a catch can, one side recirculating and the other side vent to atmosphere. Told the guy he's got a vacuum leak and argued. So how do you explain to someone that doesn't really know much about how the PCV system works that by only circulating one side, it can cause a vacuum leak? Hey, my three-year-old fuel... Si oh, you got that. Uh, I'm going to get my engine bay detailed before I send the pick. I'm using it here. I went to a dude on a forum one time and he vented PCV to atmosphere one side and restart on the other side. Thing would barely... I don't realize it was just a huge vacuum leak. Run good fuel, vent all the PCV, and if you're installing a new short block, pull the rods out and open the ring gap. Pull the pistons out? Um, that's when I earned, that's when I never learned, that's when I learned never to trust foreign people. People may be overlooking the word crankcase pressure and they may need a visual. Okay, excessive crankcase pressure. Okay, good. Right, so if you're, if, if, if boost gets by the piston and it starts to, and it starts to get pressurized in the crankcase because it gets past the piston, well, the PCV system right here designed to relieve crankcase pressure usually goes up and on stock applications they recirculate back into the manifold or into the induction meaning the the carburetor or whatever um actually no it circulates this way it's like, it's like a, it's like down and up and over down up and over okay so yeah it kind of goes this way so it has a like a rotating effect but it's always recirculating. When I say vent both, you cap this guy, vent this guy to atmosphere, vent this guy to atmosphere, because the amount of pressure that you're building up with the crankcase, if it doesn't get relieved fast enough, it builds up under the piston. So now not only do you have boost pressurizing the top of the piston, you're fighting the crankcase pressure also. So that just puts more strain on your rings, your ring land. So technically you're kind of over pressurizing everything from the bottom and the top. You're basically having a can crusher effect on the piston as opposed to just top to bottom and nothing on the bottom. So if you relieve bottom pressure, the, let's say the combustion event, you know, really focuses on the piston and drives it down on the crankcase. But if you have upward pressure you're fighting and then usually you stress out the ring lands and ring lands can let go on stock applications why because they are gapped to na specs when i talk certain subject matters i assume you don't have a stock fucking car and you just toodle around town okay when i'm talking when i'm talking crankcase being an issue i'm talking over 15 psi or over 30 let's just say 15 psi oil consumption Oil lasting longer? We're not, we're past this. We're way past that. We're way past 3,000. I have never waited 3,000 miles in my fucking life to change the oil on any of my boosted cars, especially on ethanol, because the ethanol dilutes the oil quicker than pump gas does. Stop it. What about ESS? Could you throw over Whipple? Don't care. Uh, your rings seal better with under pressure differential. He's right. 
the, the, the manufacturers of pistons, I don't think said, well, we need the bottom to be real good because we're expecting to have 30 pounds of crankcase pressure. <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> so in theory, right, this is a small block Ford piston. So in theory, if they were anticipating similar pressure from the crankcase to this ring, they would probably design it the same. They would design the top to have this much meat, right? The, and the bottom. Like if they were saying, oh yeah, this piston's great. It's going to be no problem. So this thickness, if they're anticipating high crankcase pressure, they'd probably make this bottom lip a lot thicker to account for the fact that you're going to have, you know, crankcase pressure coming up so the way they design pistons kind of lends you to kind of going oh i see where they're going i see what they're expecting i see what they're trying to do but then let's say this is your ring land on it let's say stock coyote for example and it's really thin and then you have pressure coming from the bottom making this compression sandwiching this whole thing and a lot of the stress is put on this bottom ring because of high crankcase pressure and because you don't have enough material here to support that ring it'll go boop and this little tiny ring land nicks and then you get blow by all you need is this a, a hairline crack on one of these pistons a very small hairline crack on one of these pistons and then you'll have low compression and issues when you crack a ring land this is basically where the rings usually break or even here it can break anywhere but nine times out of ten it'll end up being towards the bottom of the of, of the piston if you have high crankcase pressure issues hopefully that helps i hate to be technical because technical shows get boring really fast